five couples embark on an epic journey through the pristine wilderness of Africa. And they have only one goal in mind, survival. The truth of it is, if we go and have this and do this adventure, it's going to make or break us. In two small tents, they hike the entire country of Botswana in eight brutal stages. Keep breathing, stay that here now. <laughs> So <laughs> Facing rain, heat, illness, hunger, and wild animals that they will encounter every hour of every day. By using a compass, a map, and a GPS, they can find small amounts of food that they will desperately need in the challenges. Winning a challenge brings you one step closer to the final. Losing it puts you on the elimination bench. You're yelling at me. I'm not yelling at you, I'm just fucking over this shit. On that bench, fate decides who will be separated from his or her lover and left behind in exile. Mm -hmm. After 17 days in the wilderness, only one couple will be standing. The winners and sole survivors of Livingstone. This is an absolutely epic adventure that everybody should uh, have the guts to try. I've just dropped five couples in the huge salt pan named the Makadi Caddy. Now, tomorrow they're about to embark on the journey of an absolute lifetime. They go through Africa's most pristine wilderness. Not only will it be mentally and physically challenging, but the dangers are ridiculous too. As we speak, we've dropped them and the thunderstorms are just about to hit. Here they are, five couples from all over the world. Some are just exploring their new relationship. Some are married or share a long history together. You'll get to know them soon enough. What they do all have in common though, is that they truly love each other. And in weeks to come, their relationship will be put to the test, as will their bodies and their minds in circumstances that they've never been in before. I think with the lack of food and lack of sleep, we'll see a slightly different, gnarly side of Ola. Fucking get the stupid... How do you want me to do this when I've been throwing up for 11 hours straight? You know, we already have fights when we're back home, like over small things, so this will be very interesting <laughs> to see what will happen. <laughs> Fucking hate this shit already. If we can get through this, then we'll honestly be able to accomplish anything. I would say my biggest fear about coming to Africa on this trip is the stress that we put on my marriage. And that's something that I that I wanted to push and I wanted to test. I think it's going to make it stronger. Stop, Ryan. Is there a problem? Yeah, there is. Let's go. Let's go for what? Ryan, Mate, Ryan, get on your fucking horse. Hey, Ryan, calm down, okay? Stop. Calm down. I'm a little bit codependent on my husband because he is very protective of me, but I guess I just have to challenge myself to get there. This is where they're heading, base camp, the last resort before they will enter the wilderness. This is where they will have their last proper meal, a shower, a tent of their own, and even a toilet. Luxury that will very soon be sorely missed.
The ride down to the camp was unbelievable. It's a new country, new experience, and just getting to see like these magnificent elephants like right by the road, like you never get that. You would never get that in Sydney anyway. It's crazy. The landscape is absolutely amazing. It's the most beautiful place I've been. We all count, we were just in awe. I will never forget that first moment in the car and we're driving, even seeing giraffes. I wasn't expecting to see any of that until we were in the parks. But just on a regular old road, we passed zebras, giraffes, and elephants. So that was amazing. We are in Africa. <laughs> this is Africa. The moment when we finally arrived to camp and just saw a couple of tents here and then that's it. More bush for as far as you can see. Um, it made me feel excited really. Also a bit, a little bit nervous. I love the setup at camp. When we arrived at camp, I was uh, pleasantly surprised. I thought we were going to be on the ground. Yeah, it was much better. <laughs> Very comfortable though. Nice wanna, sleeping bags. Want to let me in there and I'll yeah. organize the back side there? Yeah. Thank you. They did a great job at really making us feel comfortable before I anticipate they're going to make us feel uncomfortable. Anything inside? Oh, <laughs> I am. Oh. oh there's plenty of space. Yeah. It was lovely, but it probably made us more anxious because you're wanting to just start with the hard part because you're just wanting to start getting into it and just start with the suffering. Let the air in a bit. So this is home. <laughs> it's like better than my tent, like camping I've done before, eh? It's like a full mattress and everything. I don't know if I would call this glamping necessarily. When I got here, I was actually really surprised that there were showers, there's toilets, and the tents were already set up for us. So I was like, this is going to be perfect. <laughs> I can definitely do this. And a last meal. I know. It's going to be eating grass, eh? I hope it's spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> How are you going, babe? Hopefully every day is going to be like this. But then James is like, you're going to be dreaming. Uh, toilet. Toilet. Do we expect a hole or do we expect an actual toilet? A hole. Oh. I'm going to confirm it's a hole. Yes. Hi, Alfie. <laughs> 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 oh, we've got so much to see. <laughs> You better have good aim though, it's quite a distance. <laughs> You're gonna be able to see everything. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's like a festival. <laughs> it's worse than a festival. Oh. Alright, nobody take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be a big challenge for me. Distinguished smells and oh that's gonna drive me absolutely mental. Do you need stuff out of your bag? Um not yet. I'll get it out after. Oh gosh. We'll be right. I just don't know how I'm gonna go not having food. You know how much I eat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, just, your body adapts to it, so just fill yourself full of water. Mm hmm. Make sure you're bloated. I'll just be peeing all the time then. That's all right. I'll be scared. I'll be like, come to the tree with me. <laughs> Cheers. 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 After sunset, when everybody has settled down, they share a last supper together, anticipating the adventure that is coming up. I'm enjoying this food so much. Yeah. <laughs> it's really tasty. It's I'm it's sucking this chicken as though it's my last meal. This is flavorful. It's really delicious. I'm really excited, but I'm a little nervous at the same time. Natural mm. nervousness. Mm. I'm, I'm... What are you nervous about? Hmm? The unknown. I'm just naturally nervous all the time. <laughs> it keeps me, it keeps me on point. I was excited for more than one reason. I was, I was excited to meet new people, to have this experience here in, in Africa. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> just, ah, what'd you get? It fell in your food. Got a little extra protein? Oh, spider. All right. Just well, five days from now, we might be fighting over that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so excited about the uh, food deprivation. I love food. 
I guess you could call me a foodie. But I also know that the lack of food in my experience has also stimulated growth in me. And so that's just the price you pay um, to, to bring yourself to another level. But I was more excited about just having a, a life-changing event. I think mm -hmm. I needed it at my point in my life. So I'm going to restart. I wonder if we're all going to be uh, friends after. Of course. Wow. I hate yeah. you, I hate you, I hate you. <laughs> Get out of my life. If you hate me, that means you didn't like Don't me Don't add me beginning. on Instagram. <laughs> Don't add me. <laughs> so I'm going to block you. But seriously, it's going to be so weird to not have social media. It's such a part of... Yeah, everyone's every life these days. The majority of my work is sitting on social media all day looking for yep. people, so yep. I just want to get away. No emails, no social media, no contact anyone else. Just really enjoy this situation no, that we're in. Oh. I'm excited to see what fun. we're um, capable of, though. Like, yeah. In the yeah. Mo when we're like pushed. Because we never, to our, we never really pushed in our life. Like, not to this. No. Yeah, not, yeah. We live like a pretty comfortable yeah, good yeah. life, so to push ourselves and... Yeah. See how we are as a couple as well. As if it were a camping holiday, one by one the couples get out of their tents, they enjoy a shower, they brush their teeth, and they check their phones for the last time. For Brad, breakfast with a bunch of strangers isn't really his cup of tea. To be honest, I have no idea. I mean, whenever I do anything, I'm, I'm not aware of myself and, you know, how we come across. Or I have no self-awareness at all. Oh, it's the last breakfast, guys. Yeah, it's like a big crouton. Maybe the last meal. Yeah, well, yeah, last meal. How did everyone sleep? Good. Did everyone hear the lions? First night. <laughs> <laughs> We're missing one out. <laughs> <laughs> it was quieter than I thought last night. Yeah. yeah. It was almost yeah, too Brian. quiet. I, mean, I was waiting for somebody to fart up. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, Brian. 20 more minutes. <laughs> oh, Everyone's still out. nervous, I would say, because we know that at the moment it's not. 100% for real yet, the challenges haven't started, um, we can still have a shower, we can still have a good toilet, but the storm's coming, for sure. Hopefully we'll see some more wildlife as well, Yeah. if we get to see elephants again, or zebras, or lions today, maybe. Hopefully not come us. <laughs> nah, we'll be fine. But before Haley and Dean will get to see the animals that they dream of, they'll first be instructed how to behave when they actually encounter them. Hi. Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Right, you will encounter several different animals on your journey. I'm going to start with the animals during the day. During the day, you need to be careful of elephant. As big as they are, you'll be surprised how well they camouflage themselves. You'll be walking along, you see nothing, and suddenly you realize, oh, I've gotten far too close to an elephant. What do you do when you get too close to an animal? The first thing is you don't panic. Be quiet, don't make a noise. Try and retreat, but do not run. If you run, you will be chased. One of the first laws of survival in the bush when you're walking is do not run. Our five couples, soon to be survivors, are currently being inducted what it takes to survive out here in the bush. Now they believe that tomorrow is when their journey will start. What they don't know is that this afternoon, I'm gonna take them out to the desert and they're gonna spend their first night together in the complete wilderness. Another thing they don't know is that there's two specially made tents, both sleeping five people in each. Let's take our GPS and our compass and let's go back to camp and we'll do a small little exercise just to give you guys a little feel for it and then uh, I'll leave you guys to you. Thank, you. thank you very much thank you guys thank you we practice using the compass to be honest I was just pretending on how to use it because I don't know what I'm doing but uh, hopefully it'll get easier as we use it 
James and I always argue over the maps, you know. I'm right, I'm right. The girl's always right, right? That's so, uh, he's gonna try, I know he's gonna try and hold in, you know, all his anger towards me, but he will. He will blow up, just watch. And I'll be there sitting, you know, under a tree crying for a while. Guys! Can I be over here a second, please? Chris came, and he's like the handsome devil. Like, he's just so nice and friendly. How you doing? And then he just delivers bad news. All right, guys. You've each got a backpack in the truck. It's got your name on it. You have 15 minutes to take your backpack, pack everything you need, and meet me back here at the truck. And he just threw the bomb, as in, like, yeah, you've got 15 minutes, go. You got that? Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Off you go. I stupidly like ran full force to our tent, like, oh my god, we've got so much to do. I wasn't expecting it, so I was like, shit. Beautiful Pack your bags in Livingstone lingo means taking little more than absolutely nothing. We was given a backpack. We was allowed um, no obviously washing materials, toothpaste, toothbrush, uh, nothing like that. Um, but starting from the ground up, we was allowed a pair of hiking boots, another pair of trainers, um, or flip-flops, like I say, I've got. Shorts. Two pairs of shorts, a pair of trousers, a vest, a long sleeve shirt, and a hat, and a bandana, and that's it. We only brought two extra outfits, for, so we were pretty much ready to go. The uh, pony should be in this plastic bag. I was pretty excited, a lot of adrenaline because we were finally getting started and um, just excited to actually do it. I'll come back over in two seconds. I'm not too worried about the limited clothes that we have because Liz has seen me at my worst, so I'm not too worried about impressing her or how I smell. Um, she's going to be as smelly as me, or maybe not quite as smelly, but. I was a little bit more worried for her and the amount of underpants and stuff that she could wear, but she seems to be doing fine. All right. That's a bit of perfume. Smell good. Yeah. <laughs> I like to brush my teeth twice a day. I like to have a shower at least once a day. All right. So whatever, how long we're going to be doing this, having no showers, I hope, I hope to God there's going to be some water event where I can just <laughs> clean myself. I don't know how that's gonna go down, I really don't. Shorts, top. It's so hot though. Right, I think I'm done. Easy as clean. my underwear. I packed all my things, but then I for thought that I was gonna forget something, so it was uh, one of those things, if you forget something, then that's it. So um, it's quite frightening, actually. Bringing that, I don't know how we made a mess in like a day, but we did. That's just the way to do that. <laughs> Give us anything, we'll make a mess. Fingers crossed. Make sure you've got absolutely everything. You got your long pants. I'm nervous. I'm excited. <laughs> Action. And, and then, obviously, everyone was back with our bags. Everyone kind of changed to game face, as in, like, right, where are we going? And, yeah, every, the, the mood did change somewhat. It was like, now it's real. The one that's back. Right, we've big fella. Where are we going to go when we hop on the bus? I have no idea what to expect. Don't know what's going to happen. It was just a sudden adrenaline rush, I guess, because we were going to be going somewhere to the unknown. So, in the unknown it was. One day after arriving in Botswana, our five couples leave behind the last stretches of civilization and set off to the vast and sizzling Makadi Kadi salt pans. I think you drove the wrong direction. There's nothing out here. 
we left the green area, <clears throat> and it's just amazing here in Africa how you can go literally around the corner, and it is just a totally different area. Wow. Where are we? We ain't nowhere. This is no way. I was expecting. I don't know what I was expecting. Check that out. It looks like a mirage of water. You can't actually see where the sky begins. Unlike anything I've ever seen, the saw pan that we come on is, is just so vast. It was crazy big and so beautiful because you can you just see for as far as your eyes can see, you know, and dead flat. Saw a few animals. First time I saw vultures, and that's phenomenal. It felt like we ended up in the middle of nowhere, out in the desert. There was nothing around. It was just all salt, flat, you know? It felt like we were like in a music video of like P. Diddy. Well guys, as you know, your journey will start tomorrow. But tonight you will spend the night here. It's the middle of nowhere. This is a beautiful salt pan named the Makadi Kadi. Now, before you leave tomorrow, you will need to separate yourselves into two groups of five. So we needed to get in two groups of five, and it didn't hit me what that meant. I was like, how is that going to work? <laughs> but then James explained to me that one couple is going to be split. So I was like, oh, here we go. I'll still be nervous going into a group because it brings me back to primary school days and secondary school. It will never change. You always have to try and fit in. Those five will be making their way to the next campsite, picking up a chest on the way. In order to do that, we will give you some aid to help you along the way. You will be given a map each, binoculars, a GPS, and also your compass. I have no idea what group you will be in, but I'll hand them out and you can give them accordingly. We get the GPSs and it's like, yep, yeah, perfect. It's going to make it so much easier. Thank you, sir. I thought we were going to have sleeping bags in them. No sleeping bags. <laughs> in order to find your way to your new camp, you will need these. Now, your campsite will be marked out with poles exactly like this. Also, the chest is very important. In the chest will be your food, your supplies, and everything else you need. And remember, without food, without pans, without fire, this challenge can be a lot more difficult than it already is. Finally, your GPS. Now, you have to use this sensibly, because throughout your whole trip, you can use that 20 times at one minute each time. Your guide will have your GPS and will give it to you upon request. Be sensible with the way you use it. If you use it too much, you could end up in the middle of nowhere with no idea. If you use it too little, it could also hamper you because have a look around. There's not many landmarks that can supply to where you are. And remember guys, this is not a race. This is all about you getting from here to where you're going at the next camp, picking up your chest 
and doing it together as a team and getting there safely. Does everybody understand? Yes. Yes. Pitch your tents, sleep well, and honestly, very best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will. <laughs> I was a little bit worried, nothing to make fire from, no food left. I knew straight away this is the start, this is where it all gets very tough for us. It was like perfect timing, Chris drove away and it was kind of like, oh that's a rain cloud. started to change and I think even when it first started to change I don't think we had any idea as to how bad it was then going to become. Before we put them up we should work out which way the wind's going. So the wind's coming in the tent. Yeah, so we get the breeze It's coming right at us. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, oh we've got rain, let's start building. We needed to set up camp. We could see bad weather coming in. So it was imperative instead of debating about things just to get it done. And that's what we tried to do. So then the brief, the things are sitting right here. Okay. Is that ground covering? I could tell there was a front. I could tell it looked like a severe front. I couldn't tell if it was going to hit us or not. The heavens are open. But when it did, priority was just keeping everything dry. But it was chaos. Everyone under here, come on. Let's cover our gear and just wait Facing the incoming storm, this is the first chance for all couples to demonstrate their skills. Wade takes charge quite a bit. Um, he's pretty handy with his military background, so he knows how to put the tents up. He's a real leader, and I think Haley is a leader in as a, as a female. She um, is quite assertive with her words, but. Liz can be the same, so I think she's obviously going to be one of the leaders as well, and uh, I'm interested to see those two go at it. <laughs> Everybody is helping set up the tents, except for Brad and Sarah, who are completely overwhelmed by the situation. Oh. There you are. Thank you, are we connecting in one big line? We've got to build our own uh, camp that night, which was a bit of a shock, because I've never built my own tent. Both of us, we're not front runners, you know, we're not the power people who, you know, automatically just say, right, do this, do that. Who's got a poncho? I've got another bag. I know, I'm all right, that's nice, right? It was quite stressful. I don't know why, maybe it was just because of the situation and the rain and everyone trying to get things done. It was just a lot of adrenaline. Does anyone want me to pass out some ponchos? <laughs> How hard is it to put a poncho on? <laughs> everyone was like, let's build camp, let's get these tents up. And I was like, let's stay dry. And I was trying not to be bossy, but I was like, please, like, let's think about this. So you got this camp? Dry. Fly across it in. Yeah, Just confirming I'm I'm threading this through the top. Um, I maybe when it doesn't thread, does it? I always have one eye on Sarah. I always keep a check on her. I like to I like to know she's just she's happy and cracking on. I can always tell by her body language. Well, we need the rope for this. And then have we got rope? Yeah, we got rope. Yeah. Right, I got. Um, and who's good at knots? I just need My a husband. knot here. Anyone know not? Honey? Yeah, but we should probably turn them, turn them around so I can dig this into the dirt. Okay. Do we have a scissors or a knife or anything? No. Oh, okay, yeah, I can use the one you got, Ryan, thanks. Oh, is there separate pieces? Is this... Yeah, good. We've had all those crazy winds and I just ducked myself down in the tent because I was like, you know, the last thing I'm going to want to do is be blown away. We actually started to set up our tents out there until nature said different.
tent thing over the bags um, with some of the other girls, and I saw the ba a bag just fly away. And just instantaneously, I didn't even think about it, you know, I knew it was raining, but I just got up and just took off running after the bag. I glanced behind me and I saw my wife running into the field by herself. I just ran out there to bring her back. I didn't realize how far I ran and I didn't catch up with the bag. It seemed like the faster I ran, the bag even blew further. And when I turned around, I guess I didn't realize how bad the storm was till I turned around. Now, I'm not that heavy, so when I turned around, it was like I was going backwards. So my husband came out and we pushed back to camp. The sun's shining. Yeah, the sun's out now. You can come out. There's a rim of water around the edges of our bags. Yeah. So maybe we pass the bags out okay. rather than lifting the tarp. Yeah. Pass it out. Hang on, yeah. no, no, what did oh I say? God. Don't lift it so up, you let the water run in. <laughs> Downwind side, bag by bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> James still did it. <laughs> That's James. We did our best to keep it dry. Oh, oh my God. Where did this, where did this come from? Whoa. After the 20 minute rain tsunami, the couples lay out the damage. Liz is especially worried if all equipment was kept dry. Where's the maps in that? <laughs> Serious? Uh, Are they all wet and. Yeah. Yeah? And the GPS is in that? Yeah, that's oh, that bag didn't blow away. Yeah. So, so, you guys are really good. Good. Did you see that dry area? that we kept. So can you imagine if everyone had just got under the tarp with their bag in their lap and yeah, sat and on the sat edge down. and yep. kept it all dry. That was the sessions like dry and waited the 20 minutes for the storm to pass. I like her idea. That would have been a good idea. I didn't want to be bossy. We had fun. <laughs> Brian, we had fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I'm gonna have a mud bath tonight. I think we really need to try and get. We're gonna exfoliate now. Try and get everything dry. Try and keep the water and the mud out of your mouth. Yeah. Even if we set the tents up, with that much rain, there's, it's not gonna soak into the ground. So we would be swimming. So, and I knew on the high ground we would we would be able to sleep in our tents and 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 stay dry if we could get the tents up. Hey guys, what do you think? Uh, there's obviously a lot of lightning and thunder in the, in the horizon there. Uh, our best bet's probably get to high ground. Yeah. Maybe we yeah. can set up a tarp, set up a fire watch for the night. Yeah. 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 Set up a shelter and do a fire watch. Yeah. Yep, sounds good. we decided that there was no way we could stay on the salt plain the way it was with that much water and we moved our stuff to higher ground. We just get under a tarp, put our bags in our laps, our backpacks, keep them dry. So let's let's bunker everything down. Yeah. Let's bunker everything down in the middle and get a tarp over it.
underneath? Yeah, we'll, we'll just go under. Are you we'll sure? be quite near you. Away from the trees? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Who's got sticks? It was lightning everywhere, and I did not want to, you know, having a chance to be killed maybe by lightning or something. So it got really dark really fast. Okay. Can we slip it up though? Because this is the dirty side. The tents were drenched. They were soaking wet. So it was so uncomfortable. Like, ah. Oh. Hey, look at this. Wind's coming that way. Look at the weather that way. There was still lightning and thunder and the presence of the storm. One tent got up, the other tent didn't get up. Oh boy, it was, it was hard. After the storm went past, we had another windstorm, so things got pretty wild in there. That's all right. Um, you know, we're here to experience the full experience, so I'm toughening myself up early. After a few hours sleep, our five couples slowly wake up after their first unforgettable night on the salt pans. It started in that way with that rainstorm. It's like we were pawns and, and God just went, here you go. Boom. <laughs> Rain, lightning, thunder, wind. That was unbelievable. And then when it finally got calm, I heard really an animal cool. too. And I was like, oh God, Brian, listen. The, hy the hyenas and the jackals came as soon as the wind died. You could hear them. Yeah, beautiful. What a way to start. Everyone's gear is drenched. Yep. Everyone's going in mud. Everybody's have, missing stuff. <laughs> I have so much sand in my mouth. My teeth are like... <laughs> well, either way, it was beautiful. I had a great time. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> That's what I, I came like here it. for. It was awesome. Yeah, it's good. It's time for the first trick. By using a map and a compass, they can locate their new campsite and two hidden chests along the way. One chest with food and one with gear. To make life easier, the group can also make use of a GPS. But each GPS can only be used 20 times for the whole journey. Ex-military man Wade has a plan in place to use it wisely. Once we plug in these actual uh, grid coordinates, we'll get a good bearing and then we can take the markers out and look. Mm -hmm. And team whichever, team orients toward their goal here. Mm -hmm. And once they're here, then they'll open up their compass, their, their uh, yep. GPS again, do one more bearing. That's two uses. I figure if you use three a day, you're good. So that'll be two for today. That'll yep. give us a little cush for, for later on. We're going to need it more in other situations because this is all really pretty flat open ground. But before they can start walking, they first have to split up into two groups of five. And because no couple wants to split up voluntarily, they decide to draw lots using their name tags. As a result, Liz and Ryan will walk separately. Ryan, so Ryan, you're with us. We need a break anyway. <laughs> Liz and Ryan actually got married only one year ago. Liz works for Australian television and lives a glamorous lifestyle in the spotlight. I would say for the last five years I've been a five-star girl. I'm kind of ashamed to say it because I'm still that Queensland Aussie girl at heart that doesn't mind getting her hands dirty, but just the direction that my life's gone has put me in beautiful, luxurious environments. She met Ryan on the beach where he was a lifesaver and she a professional surfer. Her winner's mentality has never left her, nor has her tendency to talk. I talk a lot. I'm also quite bossy by nature. Really commanding, like, take control and get the chaos in order. And it can be a bit annoying towards people at times when I'm like always rah, rah, rah. Ryan is not a lifesaver anymore, but a private investigator. Observing people is his job. I like to think that my strength as a private investigator is to sit and observe everyone, um, really work out who they are, what their strengths are, 
really going to get in there and find out what everyone's about and what their strengths are before they find out what mine are. With all their belongings, the two groups set off for their first hike through the magnificent Makadi Kadi salt pans. Liz walks with Wade and Teresa and Brad and Sarah, while Ryan joins Haley and Dean and Ola and James. Both groups try to use their GPS as little as possible. We only get to use the GPS 20 times throughout the whole game, and that's going to be hard, especially if the treks like, are going to increase in difficulty every time. When hiking, each group is accompanied by a guard who carries a rifle. Walking through the African wilderness is not a walk in the park and danger could be just around the corner. Although the biggest threat is to get lost. Should we check our surroundings? Yeah. Yeah. We're on drag. Good time as any. Okay. We're on course? Yeah. Yes, things are going well. That's good news. <laughs> things are going well. I wonder if the others are on course. Please don't let them be lost. <laughs> Ryan will be so grumpy tonight. <laughs> We set off and we was pretty much from the start on Salt Pan, which would have been absolutely amazing and beautiful, but the rain changed that. I look like I've got those little rackets to their feet to go on yeah. walking yeah. in snow. Oh. Mud rackets. It was like we were swimming. There was so much energy wasted just trying not to slip. It was like you was ice skating. If we slide, we might just glide there all the way. Scenically, it was beautiful, <laughs> but from the knees down, it was horrible. Hey, what's that over there, hon? Oh. Is that a carcass? Oh, you don't need to go look. I was just I telling you looking. to look that way. I am going to go look. Is that our bag? Oh my God. Yes! Yes! I that bag. I did it! You remember I ran for this? <laughs> <Our tip bag>. <laughs> <laughs> it was the bag I was chasing last night. The chance of that happening, finding something that blew away in the wind like that is almost impossible. So I think my angels were helping me. Wow. That's ridiculous. That is funny. Well, the other group are going to be happy. They've now got a tent bag back. Yep. Yeah. We come bearing gifts. I just hope we've got the chest too. Down the right way. Where's the map? All right. We are. Upside down. <laughs> <laughs> right. We should be going north because we're just Right here? Yeah. Okay. yeah, so I'd agree what we've been going off says to go pretty much there. After a few hours walking, temperatures rise and the seeming infinity of the track starts to take its toll. It's so hot. I just like um, close my eyes and walk away. Don't. Just like all the same shit. Usually I can walk for hours and hours and hours, but in that heat, it's something so different. You're dehydrated, you've got a headache, you feel sick, and you've got all this weight on you, and you don't know where you're going, you don't know how far. So you really have to push yourself. Ola is a model, and James a professional golfer. They met on the golf course when she took lessons from him. My job being a professional golfer is I'm always competing against people, so it will help in the challenges, but being able to hit a golf ball in a hole probably won't help me surviving in the wildlife of Africa. But uh, I don't know, we may see. A lot of people have like misconceptions about models. We're gonna beat that girl, she's a model, she can't do anything, but I'm here to prove that all wrong. I've got balls too, you know what I mean? Are you thirsty? Please. Yeah. Huh? Better make sure you keep drinking, yeah? It was a bit difficult for me. 
but I had James. He'd always look behind, like I was walking really slow to the end and make sure that I was okay and had water. It's so heavy. Next, on Livingstone. Oh, Jesus, the poor thing. I would rather die in Africa before I quit. So hard to yeah. It's a nightmare for me. I'm going home. I'm, I'm sick. I'm dizzy. I'm going to throw up. <laughs> Fucking hate this shit already.